I want to speak with you this morning a dense theological term. Now, I understand that that is probably the worst thing you can say at the beginning of a sermon, and so I deeply appreciate that you all didn't just run for the exits right now, but don't worry, this sermon is not just going to be a theological lecture. I mean, after all, that's what the Bethany podcast is for. No, I want to spend time today thinking about a particular theological concept but I want to do that while also carefully considering Mary and what she reveals to us with her words in the gospel passage that I just read for you. I believe that Mary's song from the gospel of Luke this morning gives us an incredibly helpful model for how we should approach our daily walk of faith. And it just so happens that Mary's song is also an example of a dense theological term. Her song is what theologians call a prolepsis. Let me hear you say prolepsis. Prolepsis. Great job, we're right on track. Prolepsis is this idea that something can be true right now and not yet. It is the anticipation of something existing before it actually exists. I know, I know, that's not really confusing, but let me give you some examples of how we do prolepsis each and every week here in the sanctuary. For example, as Christians, we believe that Christ is present with us right now. And yet, we also believe that Christ will be fully, truly present when he comes to earth again. That's a prolepsis. When we gather for communion, We say that it is a foretaste of the feast to come. In other words, we believe that Jesus is truly present with us through the bread and the wine, and yet we also believe that communion is giving us a glimpse of the true glory and promises of God that will be fulfilled in the future. That's a prolepsis. Maybe you've had a God moment in your life where you just knew that the Holy Spirit was there, present with you, moving in your heart. But then that moment was gone. These moments can feel as if we've glimpsed something divine and eternal. They are the thin spaces where heaven and earth overlap. And that's a prolepsis, because you brushed up against something big and holy, and yet you also somehow knew in that moment that you were only glimpsing the full promises of God that are still to come. Okay, I know. I'm giving you a lot to chew on, and if you're like me, you've only had one cup of coffee so far this morning. But it's important and really powerful to grasp this idea of prolepsis because it's so linked to our life of faith. We are constantly living in these in-between spaces. And, And that's why I find Mary's song so valuable, so instructive, Because Mary's words help us better understand how to live out our faith right now and how to simultaneously look towards the future with hope. Let me walk you through this gospel passage a little bit to show you what I'm talking about. When Mary arrives at her cousin Elizabeth's house, we learn that the child in Elizabeth's womb leaps with joy. And this causes Elizabeth to recognize the great blessing that has been given to Mary. And so after Elizabeth's joyful acclamation, Mary responds with a beautiful song of praise. Mary sings about God casting down the mighty and lifting up the poor and feeding the hungry and sending the rich away empty-handed. She is giving thanks to God for all of these blessings, for all of this good news. But notice that none of the stuff that Mary describes in her song has happened yet. Casting down the mighty, lifting up the poor, feeding the hungry. Those are all things that Jesus will do. But Jesus, I remind you, is in utero. He's not even born yet. And this is the key element of faith that Mary has to teach us this morning. Mary's joy and praise isn't tied up only in events that have already happened. No, her joy is connected to all of the things that God will accomplish. Because in Mary's mind, in Mary's faith, what has happened and what will happen are one in the same. She's keenly aware of all the ways that God has blessed her greatly right now, and so she is confident 
that God will make good on all of God's promises for the future. Just notice the specific words that Mary uses in her song. She sings and says, God has lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things. God has helped his servant Israel. Her song is almost entirely in the past tense. Because in Mary's mind, these future promises are as good as done. And this is what Mary has to teach us. When we are so aware and grateful for the promises and blessings that God has authored in our life, that gratitude will compel us to more fully trust the promises that God has made for the future. What has God given to you? Really think about it. God woke you up this morning. That didn't have to happen. God brought you safely to this place. God gave you a church family with people who care about you and choirs that sing beautiful songs and a building that's warm and well-maintained. God gave all this to you. We live in a country where we're allowed to practice our religion freely. We live in a city where I swear the sun is always shining. I can't get over this. We live at a time when scientific advances have allowed us to overcome medical complications that generations ago would have been a death sentence. We have so much. We are so blessed. Every day, every moment is a gift from God. And every once in a while, we need to take a step back and pay attention to this. In particular, I think at at this time of year, This development of gratitude is an essential practice. I was in the store the other day with my youngest daughter, Miriam, and we were checking out getting some groceries, and the first thing that the cashier said to both of us was to look at four-year-old Miriam and say, hey, what do you want for Christmas? Everywhere we go, this is the question that any stranger will ask any one of my three children. (laughs) We are very focused this time of year on what we want. What do you want for Christmas? What's on your Christmas list? And and it's not just Christmas either. In a week or so, all of this asking will now be about what's your New Year's resolution? What do you want for 2022? It's all focused on us and what we want. But Mary reminds us and invites us to open our hearts. To open our hearts to all the ways that God has already blessed us. In the Gospel reading, we hear, and we'll hear again on the Christmas story and later this week, Mary is portrayed as a person with a truly open heart and with a deep sense of gratitude. And she shows us that when we open our hearts in gratitude, our hearts will simultaneously open in faith as well. That's what Mary's song is all about. She realized that if God had blessed her this fully right now, that she could certainly believe all of the promises that had not yet happened. When we praise God for our blessings, it strengthens our ability to believe God's promises. Let me say that again. When we praise God for our blessings, it strengthens our ability to believe God's promises. And so that's why I always say, if you're ever finding yourself struggling in faith, know that it's completely normal. But one of the best ways you can dig yourself out of any sort of faith rut is to simply be grateful. Start by looking at your life and naming all that God has done for you, and your heart will slowly open. And the gratitude you'll feel towards God will be the fuel that can help you believe again all that God has promised. Because if God was good enough to bless us with a church like this, where we can hear the good news, then maybe we can really believe that God is good enough to help us grow in our faith in the year ahead. If God was good enough to bless us with a church like this, where we can belong and be cared for, and then we can have faith that God is already at work bringing equality and justice to other parts of this hurting world. If God was good enough to bless us with this earth and this life, then we can believe that God really will provide us with a life after death. 
God has given so much to us right now. We are blessed and thankful for all that God has done, and that's just the beginning. Because the fullness of God's promises are true right now and not yet. May we open our hearts and be ever grateful for the blessings of this moment, and may the joy that we discover in the right now lead us to greater faith in the not yet. Amen.